going on doom bots it is the heroes for hire team review now again i don't like doing team reviews for characters with less than a full and complete team but uh as it is right now the heroes for hire can use like 40 different fourths or fifths characters so like let's just go into these characters because there's a lot of what you need to know about these guys uh and then not worry so much or speculate a little bit about who the best fifth is at the end as always, uh, we're going to do ISOs, tier fours, and like general investment uh, conversation in one video. And we're going to try to get this as quick as possible. We're going to start off with the older characters, starting with Iron Fist. The good news is that Iron Fist uh, hasn't really changed much. The requirements for him are very low. So obviously, the stronger they are, the better they are. We don't have to worry about gear tier investment he isn't one of the most important members of the team but he's like a little bit more important than luke cage so if you do want to invest in him gear or anything you're more than welcome to uh iso specifically healer makes the most sense because he is kind of the only healer on the team you have absolutely no issues putting specifically uh skirmisher or striker on him fortifier isn't very relevant for him because he has a lot of self-sustain uh and you're not going to get too much out of raider the crit isn't that much considering he's really only using two attacks uh but you can really do anything the team has a lot of built-in survivability when it's completed starting with his abilities uh this is a phenomenal tier four the apply for defense up to two allies when they hit 50 percent and on churn getting an additional chance to heal uh specifically this was great on the defenders great on the defenders but uh on the heroes for higher war defense it just gets up better because guess what he's gonna be the ai and you know how the ai spider-man dodges all the time the ai iron fist heals all the time so it's a pretty reasonable upgrade but outside of that there are quite literally no necessary upgrades on him you can absolutely upgrade this for a little bit more damage if that's what you choose to do especially because on war defense and again this is a war defense team so if you don't care about working on a war defense team it doesn't matter but when you start this is kind of where you're going to want to be at on war defense he will target the highest damage enemy instead of the primary target whatever right like whatever it's not the lowest health enemy it's not like an execute so getting a little bit more damage 700 it's great it's phenomenal don't feel bad about this investment but you really don't need it this is more of a sustained team and all their damage comes from one character anyway peace no chance that extra 3,000 healing ain't nothing if it was an extra 10 percent healing maybe but 3,000 8,000 plus 30 versus 5,000 you're not even gonna feel it unnecessary tier 4 don't even bother uh martial artist uh guarantees a chain so this is okay again it's a little bit of a damage increase both to the uh, attacks and oh well specifically only the primary target so no nope, not even not great and counter attack does break the chain don't worry about it if you get to the point where iron fist is basicking uh on defense anyway that's fine for offensive purposes this team doesn't do much better it's still a mediocre team uh moving to iron well i'm sorry luke cage uh, isos you could put fortifier on him if you want it's you know standard issue tanks get fortifier no issues there but this team isn't particularly weak uh, i like healer he does tend to have a pretty decent health pool so throwing out a little bit of extra healing on his turn when he takes it is fine there's no value in striker skirmisher or raider so uh, skirmisher is actually not terrible with any potential counter attacks but really it's between these two you can't go wrong pick whichever one you'll be fine when iso blues come out you might see fortifier get a little bit better that's another conversation for another day uh moving to his tier fours it's literally again just his passive it's 20 percent health for himself and on war defense 20 percent max health to all heroes for how that's it you don't have to worry it goes to a total of 50 percent. that's insane everything else on luke cage at best questionable this turns from one to two to one to three ability energy trust me they're not having any energy problems on their own bring it on clears all negative effects versus two negative effects so does him going under 50 percent. so does him dying so does him re like who cares not even a beginning conversation uh and then beat up woo we're not even gonna pretend 
we are we are not even gonna pretend for a second uh at least you'll get a little bit more damage from the assist but like come on dude, don't waste your don't waste your tier fours on an old character that just needs one um as for gear the stronger he is the less likely he is to die uh and the longer he is to to kind of taunt around but that's pretty much what you can do with like fortifier if you need to now we're going to move on to the new characters we're going to go missing Knight. misty knight is actually no joke the most important character on the team she's not the most damage dealing character on the team she doesn't represent the most likely chances for you to win but as far as characters go if misty knight dies the entire team gets incredibly harder to beat or easier to beat uh, harder to win with i guess is a better way to say it so for misty knight you want to give her a little bit of survivability. I chose Fortifier for now. I don't think this is the right choice. I just really don't want her to get killed. A lot of people are going to end up killing Colleen Wing, but then it's it's a time fight, and the rest of the Heroes for Hire team are going to have to beat you down. So I like to keep her survivable. I do think that Striker and Skirmisher are better for her in the same way that, like, striker on bishop is better for him uh but you really do want her to survive so until you're confident she will be able to survive on her own i i didn't mind hedging a little bit and giving her you know an extra 20 30 000 health uh and some shield while the rest of the team does what they do keep in mind the most important thing to remember is that the heroes for higher defense team is very similar to the marauders and less similar to say uh, fury shield they're not gonna beat you down with damage really quickly they're going to out sustain everything your opponents are doing they're going to out survive them so making sure misty knight survives uh to use her abilities is going to be relevant now looking at her tier fours crew captain not even a question on enemy death apply speed up to two random heroes insane uh extra focus insane especially when you look at colleen wing uh, the rest of her kit that you don't have to worry too much about from here, and you can't see it because I'm here, but trust me, you haven't, you know, you have the way to look it up any other way. But those two things are what make a big, big enough difference. Uh, the grant 10 ability energy to self and all heroes for allies, like, that's why she's amazing. It means you can't just, like, send in a tank team and screw them up. They're always going to be doing the best things they can be doing. So that's kind of why uh, this team is insane. And if she goes down, you could start... Even if you try to two-tap the team, killing Colleen Wing prevents that team from having damage going forward, but it doesn't prevent the survivability. And whoever the fifth is might still be a nightmare. Killing her makes it a lot easier to take out the rest of the characters, providing you're using some kind of comp. Um, no real need to go over this it's pretty much all the same from here the only major difference at level five was enemy death speed up and extra focus pretty useful armed response uh the increase is only 120 percent damage so whatever you know it's a good upgrade but it's not required everything else in this ability is is great at level one so you're just paying for damage it's good damage you don't really need it that much. Stopping power uh, is 40% primary and secondary damage and 100% damage to all summoned allies. Again, it's just damage. It's a great damage upgrade. You don't need it too often. This team is about survivability. The more you put it, the more likely they are not only to survive, but end the fight before the five minute timer. Do it if you'd like. I don't see it necessary for them to be a threat. I just see it necessary maybe in, in higher powered fights to kind of round them out uh and again everything that she needs is done at at this point at level six because she'll always chain that's the only major change uh her basic on the other hand uh always apply offense up to a random colleen wing ally first of all i like random colleen wing ally if you can't see it it's behind me but it does say random colleen wing as if you could have two and it's like no 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 that one whatever uh the idea is simple it always applies offense down with this tier 4 as opposed to a chance, 80, I believe, 80% chance to do it. And then always apply offense up instead of, again, a chance. Or no, no chance. It, it might not even do it. Uh, and if Colleen Wing is available, that's fine. Since this attack is probably going to happen a little bit later, getting that offense up on Colleen Wing and making sure there's a defense down on whomever you end up hitting, huge value up. Uh, again, can be skipped, but 
since it does so many different things, guarantee a defense down and guarantee Colleen Wing, the primary damage deal of your team, has an offense up, it's pretty reasonable. Uh, finally, we will go to Colleen Wing. Uh, Damio Lineage is without a doubt uh, a required tier 4 for her. The increase in damage, while this character is deflect, they have a 100% chance to counterattack and 20% block amount. She needs to stay alive. Her and Misty are both the only reasons this team can possibly win. Everyone else is just facilitating their success. So increasing the amount of damage she hits the most injured non on chance, on anyone's chance really, uh, anyone's turn chance, huge, the extra piercing damage, the taunt, gaining deflect whenever it happens, just, just massive, massive output of damage from this character with this tier 4, you're gonna want it. Uh, um, Samurai Flash is also incredible. It goes to a 300% piercing. Absolutely phenomenal. Uh, if any target is a protector, attack that target in addition for more damage. Great. Uh, this is a huge damage attack, right? So this is an absolutely worthwhile tier 4. It's not mandatory, but you see a lot since she is the primary damage dealer. That extra 50% is going to make a huge amount of difference as you go on. Apply heal block to all enemies, gain 1,000 extra focus, and if Misty allies, this can't be judged. This kind of shores up a lot of value on this fight. Uh, again, the apply heal block for two turns instead of one can be relevant. Uh, that's the other part of this text, but it is a very good tier 4. It's just not one of the most important tier 4s. Fearsome Strikes, uh, this is, again, one extra bleed stack, and then brings it from 330 to... 400 really strong attack absolutely phenomenal if you you shouldn't regret any tier fours you put in colleen wing but there is a little bit of a priority this is probably the last priority on the tier four for colleen wing uh being passive basic ultimate and then this one but again it's a good ability don't regret putting it in I like the basic for two reasons. The first is attack the primary target and apply two bleed. The apply two bleed is added at the end, and the primary target attack goes up by 40%. Uh, the second and most important is her counterattacks are based on this. Not her passive hit a random person, her counterattacks are based on this. And since it's very likely that a ton of people are going to be single targeting Colleen to the best of their ability, and whenever she gains a deflect, which is all the time, she will counter, and of course, they can gain counters through them through their own actions. Getting extra free damage is kind of how Colleen Wing's going to do a lot of work. So I think this tier four is a lot better because it just happens all the time, as opposed to I have to push a button to do it. Again, none of them are bad. Uh, this one is ready on. They're both ready on turn one. D defensively, you're good. They're, she's always going to do this, so upgrading this is better. But uh, for the rule of this character, Damio Lineage, Katana Slash, Samurai Flash, and Fearsome Strikes, you won't go wrong with any investment. Uh, as for the ISO, Striker. We're done. No Raider. Don't need to worry about the crits on her. She's bleed stacks. The extra damage does front and back loaded damage. Um, the bonus attacks will put more bleed stacks on. It, it's Striker. You can put other stuff on her. You could Same reason you could put Fortifier on her to keep her alive. But uh, especially if she's not like my, if she's like mine, where she's nowhere near as powerful as the other characters, uh, ultimately shouldn't be too big of a deal. Uh, that's it for the heroes for higher teams. Now I just want to do a real quick look at who you could add to the team to make them good. Obvious rules are number one: Jessica Jones. She makes Luke Cage a little bit stronger because she's a defender. She makes Iron Fist a little bit stronger because she's a defender. She also has a little bit of an energy battery and the ability to clear some buffs. She has a debuff uh, removal. She has a pretty decent damage stat for her attack. Uh, all in all, she's a good include and kind of an obvious one. Another one would be Ms. Marvel, since there are two brawlers on the team, uh, and one of them is a ref and she's a reflexive taunt if one of them takes a little bit of damage. Uh, it's pretty reasonable to throw her on the team. Uh, either of those are great options. I don't like Ms. Marvel because I think she works better with the Young Avengers in general, but a totally good option. Now we're going to get into some of the cuter ones. Uh, Silver Surfer is a great standalone character, as is Dr. Octopus, where people have to not only deal with the threat of the heroes for hire, but now they have to deal with the added threat of a standalone character. Same conversation goes to Doom. There is, however, one slight change. 
If you are in a room that is buffed by security or security itself, your opponents are constantly spawning with defense down. So if you were to use the Heroes for Hire with Kestrel because of how their speed meter works, because of how their turn meter works, Kestrel's, before she even takes a turn, is going to be hitting 10 to 15 characters <laughs> because of how everybody is taking extra damage. Yes, I'm exaggerating, but you're getting a lot of free damage before anyone even takes a turn with Kestrel Heroes for Hire in a room buffed by security. So that's another, haha, deal with this kind of team. Um, that's pretty much everything as far as the Heroes for Hire are concerned. I tried to make this video a little bit quick. You know that never goes the way I want. Hopefully this was useful information. Comment below, let me know what you're doing with your Heroes for Hire and if there's anything that uh, I didn't think about. You know, if there's any third character that isn't like, oh, Zemo, you know, or some crazy powerful character, some maybe Miles, or if you can come up with any weird character to use with these guys, let me know. Anyway, have a good night, guys. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangili, and I will catch you later.